Welcome to the Northampton Commission on Disabilities. This meeting is being audio taped and videotaped. And we will start with introductions. So we'll go around and everyone can just introduce themselves. I'll start. Um, I'm Tori Eklund and I'm the chair of this commission. And we'll go this way. This way, sorry. To the left, my left. Marianne. Marianne. Who are you? Marianne. Okay. Marianne LaBarge, City Councilor. Jeff Harness, Billy Dickinson, and I'm a guest. Hannah Coyle, Vice Chair. Gay Horton, Hannah Miller. Ruth McGrath, Secretary. Natalia Munoz, I am the Chair of the Human Rights Commission. And I'm Gabby Shaughnessy, the uh, ADA Coordinator and Director for the Senior Center. Next, we have public comment. I don't think we have any members of the public. Do we? Okay. Okay, so let's just quickly um move the march. Do we have a forum? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you do because yeah, okay. you, yeah, you do. So um do we have a motion to approve the minutes for March 17th? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent, thank you. All right. So now we have two guests tonight and um, first I'd like to introduce Natalia Monez. I'm sorry I think I totally mispronounced your name. No that's fine. You did very well. Yeah. But um, and Natalia is the chair of the Human Rights Commission and I had put on the agenda that our, our topic is building bridges and working together. So just learning about what you do and figuring out if there are ways in which our missions overlap um, and how we might be able to help one another. Thank you very much. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, yes, I think that there are ways that we can work together because access is a human right. And for instance, uh, our commission used to meet at City Hall and we had to stop meeting there because there wasn't access. Oh. Uh, we would meet at 7 o'clock at night, City Hall. The, the downstairs that opens to the elevator area, that door was locked. Yeah. Um, so then, and those steps. Yes. And it just happened again when we had the meeting yeah. with the mayor. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Door downstairs will lock again. Yeah. Yeah. So now what we've been doing lately, the last uh, three meetings, we have been meeting at the police station community room. Oh, mm -hmm. right, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it, it's, it's working okay. But I think that for something like human rights, especially since our mission is to advise the mayor, Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think it's good uh, sort of psychologically to have the meeting in City Hall. And then going to how we can work together is that the issues that you raise that are important to you, if you could please then make us aware of them so that we can partner and be in solidarity to, to bring those issues together before the mayor um, and the city council. Mm -hmm. I have a question. We just had a meeting with Jeff Harness, Patty and I and Ruth, in regards to coming together. Maybe you can talk about it after. But right now, what I'm suggesting, and I would like to also recommend Natasha to be on that committee with us under human rights because she does represent everybody in the city and she represents the rights and the civil rights of how people are being taken care of, any type of abuse or anything like that. So I'll let, let him talk about this after, mm -hmm. about what we're planning on doing, having a meeting in June, and it will be three times a year. Okay. Okay, at the Kalika. Okay. But I think she would fit in well with that. She's really good. Her vision goes that way. Thank you, Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tori. Okay. Yeah. I'm done unless anybody has questions. I'm here to listen. Okay. Questions, comments? I have, a, I have my hand up. Oh, okay, Patty. Usually what, um, when um, somebody has a question, they raise their hand, and then I tell Tori that somebody has a, their hand up and she calls on them. And I forgot to remind people of that, so thank you. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
what are some of the um, actions that your committee has taken? Uh, well, most recently, it was actually um, in December, um, we called on the mayor to appoint a special commission to review how the police department functions. A, mm -hmm. to, for them to do, uh, uh, to look at themselves, to ensure that what the, the terrible things that have happened in, in Ferguson and Staten Island and elsewhere uh, throughout mm -hmm. history, not just in the last 12 months, does not happen in Northampton. Um, we also have a, a co-sponsor the, uh, the effort to encourage businesses to pay livable wages, mm -hmm. knowing full well that mm -hmm. some businesses, if they cannot afford to pay a livable wage, otherwise they'll go out of business. Sure. Um, but wherever they can, so at least to bring that up as a, as mm -hmm. a possibility. Um, you know, from time to time, groups come to us and just ask for our, our support, okay. yeah. and we're happy to give them the support. Uh, we stopped receiving complaints from the public. Yeah, there's a big after, change uh, in the charter. charter. So then that's why now, what Bill, Dwight, what Bill Dwight said is, you are the moral, you know, conscious of Northampton. Mm, so we true. said, okay. Wow. So we get to get on a soapbox and, and say things that we think um, it, they dovetail with what human rights are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so as we know, some of those human rights are codified into law, like discrimination, but there are a bunch that are not. So sometimes the best that we can do is raise the issue mm -hmm. and have the city council raise the issue. And now there's an awareness has been raised. That's Small great. Steps. Right. And it's a very large commission. How many? Well, we have up to nine members. Mm -hmm. And now we're going through an influx at the, in the, at the beginning of this year where members' terms came up. Yeah. And they decided after serving one or two terms not to continue. So we're always looking for if they How people. many are we looking for now? Um, well, let's see. If we could have three more people, that would be great. Mm. That would be great if we could have three more people mm. who will attend meetings. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The key, the key, I mean, uh, we lost perfect. two excellent members, and that was Sarah. Yeah. And um, Carol Reinhardt. Carol Reinhardt, who was. And it was all due basically because of the new open meeting law. And them being in a profession that they're in, they found it very difficult not to be able to talk with board members on the outside of an issue. And I agree with that 100%. And when we went to Senator Rosenberg's conference, Moore Healy was there. I can't tell you the different selectmen and whoever got up to speak about how wrong it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, how wrong that open meeting law needs needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. There was great concerns about that, and I mm -hmm. agree. So, anyways, mm -hmm. I am pushing for more Healy to come to the city of Northampton. They're doing one in Worcester. Mm -hmm to come in the fall, because she told me that would be the best time, and her assistant to her said that would be a perfect time to do a training for everybody involved in the city, okay, yeah. on the open meeting law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, because part of the, what the council is referring to is, if people had a complaint, they had no privacy. If you exactly. keep a public record, yeah. everything mm -hmm. they said. That's and right. Oh. Kept people from, feeling a, a liberty. Right, to feeling to safe. Sh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow, that is. That puts you under a lot of pressure. Yes. I mean, yeah. they've got to do Absolutely. their minutes, just like council does, all our city council meetings. Every committee that we have placed in the city has to do their minutes. They are used as um, documentation in case of a lawsuit. That's why everything's being videoed now because that would be used for the court and also a minutes. Minutes, short and easy, that's the baby right there. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions for Natalia? Yes, sidewalks. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's sidewalks, yeah. 
este, <coughs> why does the city not have sidewalks everywhere? Why is it there's sidewalks sometimes on just one side of the mm -hmm. street and not on the other side of the street? Mm -hmm. And why aren't the sidewalks being maintained este, at optimal level throughout the year? Why are they let, este, um, why is it, I'm trying to formulate the question. Money. Right, but right, but then, but then I say, then, 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 then it's the government's job to look for the money because it's a safety issue. I mean, why are they uneven and unsafe to walk on? They're well, awful. even you know, the other day They're there awful. was They're a awful. woman walking from the big Y on the road to that light on King and Damon and Bridge Road. She was because there isn't a okay. safe when you live in the. I, what's the name of the project? The housing Florence, project. Florence, uh, Hampshire, yeah. Hampshire Heights. Hampshire Heights. Yeah. <clears throat> the, it's you know you, there's a crosswalk there at the light, mm -hmm. but if you exit through the where the CBS corner is, yes, yes, then there is no sidewalk to get to all these yeah. other businesses, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people who work in that area, and there are people I see them all the time walking from the co-op, walking from Big Y along the road. What is it called? North King Street, mm -hmm. and it's dangerous. And there's nothing that even says, be careful, they're pedestrians. Mm -hmm. If you come out to our ward, like Overlook Drive, there's no sidewalks. Yeah. Route 66, yeah. huge project. Yeah. You saw where the sidewalk is. Mm -hmm. Full blown light, one sidewalk from that full blown light all the way straight down. Past the ice pond, straight um, past the um, old Northampton State Hospital. Mm -hmm and down the hill mm -hmm. into Forbes Library. Right. Route 66, right. our way, nothing. Right. People did not want sidewalks then, okay? Because they didn't want to be responsible for have to take care of them and shovel them. Mm -hmm. But we had many who wanted them. She does not have a sidewalk, you do not have sidewalks either. And I think sidewalks should be placed on every street throughout yeah. the city of Northampton. It's a safety issue. It is, I agree. And I also feel we have a problem, and I agree with you, Natasha, and with Tori. Mm -hmm. We have sidewalks that are in dire repair, if not done over, because even people, children with disabilities cannot access them. Yeah. I have to say, I was spent a lot of time downtown over the weekend, and mm -hmm. I have to say it was scary just walking along, even yeah, with the sighted guide. Yes, because they're so uneven. Yeah, I felt like awful. I was. I felt like I was going to trip and fall any minute, and I'm pretty steady on my feet. I mean, I mm -hmm. you know, aside, and I was following I various sighted people, but I, I do have to say it was very noticeable. And back of City Hall. Mm -hmm. Take a look at that. Mm -hmm. I, was just I was with the planning director a month ago. During the night, lighting is terrible. Mm -hmm. Actually tripped. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I landed on my knees. I caught myself with my hands like that. Mm -hmm. You look now, and you're seeing all these orange things where all the sidewalk in the back is broken. Yeah. So they're up to replacing them, hopefully. But I think with the Department of Public Works. It is a safety issue. I agree with this 100%, but I think money should be looked at very, very carefully to making it accessible for every person being safe walking on the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. I agree And we all. have more and more people with disabilities, okay, but you can't see the disabilities mm -hmm. who are having difficulties walking. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I agree too. Um, Ruth had, um, filed a complaint right with the parking the handicapped parking spot behind city hall oh, where yeah. that curb was yeah yeah so i think that they've um highlighted that with spray paint yeah that's it's something mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of Usually areas when i'm there it's dark yeah. and i can't see the paint anyway <laughs> so this is an example. i know it's there so. i'm sorry i didn't mean to yeah, interrupt there's I just hey. think this is an example of There's an issue that our two commissions could. All around the back. I was with work on together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we can we can jointly go say before the the city council meeting and say the human rights commission and, and the commission on disabilities, disabilities 
we urge the, the mayor and the city council to identify, is, what is it, federal money? If they, there is, because it's also, it's a safety issue and it's also an access issue in terms of people to be able to get to school, to work, to visit people, mm -hmm. to be able to go outside their home. Well, good, to, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's I was, right. I was just gonna say, I, for healthy communities, you need good you, sidewalks. Right. You and I, you and I could do that. Okay, okay. we could do that. Yeah. I'm just gonna. Can I say something? And I think yes. Yeah. Patty wanted to say something. Um, I just wanted to say years ago, um, we used to be asked by the DPW because they had some funding specifically for sidewalks, mm -hmm. so the commission could um, decide where some of the hot spots were. For I'm gonna say it was never more than like seven thousand dollars, you know, to fix. Um, sidewalk concrete that was one inch higher than the other mm -hmm. or huge cracks or needed a curb cut mm -hmm. um, but that money went away I, I don't know where specifically it came from for DPW but mm -hmm. we always were given the opportunity to make recommendations as so, to where it could go that's very good I would suggest that if for any reason we're going the mayor Commission on Disabilities the city council to also add the department of, um, of the department of public works mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. because they are the ones that also need to work with the mayor to mm -hmm. look for the funding city councilors right. we don't do that mm -hmm. okay but if you can pressure the we, mayor we can pressure okay but we also have to agree to the funding mm -hmm. right. that's yeah. the biggie right there well Dory, whenever um When's the next city council meeting? Do today's the uh, fourth Wednesday? Next month? No. May? May um, it's April, yes. May 7th. May 7th. Is that a date that you can go and we can sign up for the public comment? Um, sure. Okay. We, we should be in touch um, yeah. Yeah. between now and then, but um, I'm going to put it on my schedule. Okay. And we can talk about you know, how we and remember to be there before seven o'clock. You need to sign up in order to speak. And we're probably going to have a busy night that night because I have the veterans coming in, and they're doing a presentation on a huge function that I've been involved with them mm -hmm. for Western Mass. Mm -hmm. And also, we're working on a proclamation, mm -hmm. and the mayor. Cynthia Murphy in the mayor's office mm -hmm. is writing it up. Mm -hmm. The mayor is going to be presenting it to these guys who are putting on this huge function. Okay. Well, is that not the best night for us to come then? Yeah, that's a good night, night, night because it's, it's only open coming. public session, but there will be people there. Yeah, you have three minutes to speak. But okay. if both of you do it, then three and three. Yeah, six. Or six minutes. I mean, one of us can do it and just say the other person's here from this commission. Right, right. 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 We are yeah, exactly. How do I get in touch with you, Tori? Um, my email, um, Tori Eklund, T O R I. I got it now, thank you. T O R I. Uh huh. I see your name. Uh huh. E K L U N D. Uh huh. At gmail. Oh, that. Oh, thank goodness for gmail. <laughs> yep, Tori Eklund at gmail.com. Okay. So, because I think that's the beginning, email, I think that's email good. me and then I'll have yours. Yes. Okay. okay. We'll, yeah, we'll do that. Oh. Um, yes. Anybody else yeah. find it useful to include the board of health? They have a mass and motion grant from the state. Oh, right. And they're looking at things like um, complete streets initiatives, which includes making sure sidewalks are repair for people who want to be physically mm -hmm. active. That's right. And who is that? Meredith O'Leary. Meredith O'Leary. She's super. I got a sure. number, Natasha. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So that's a good collaboration. Okay, her number is 587 mm -hmm. One, two. One four. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Meredith O'Leary. So, um, any other questions for Natalia before we nope. let Jeff have a turn? <laughs> yep. Okay. Thank you. No question. No question. Okay. But um, all right. So um, so we we invited. We invited Jeff to come back um, because we felt that we had more to discuss and that there were things that we didn't get to last time. So thank you for agreeing to join us again.
Um, and I, I'll just let you speak about what you had planned to present last time, Community Health Transportation Summit. Sure. So um, hospitals conduct a community health assessment every three years. And we do that for a couple of reasons. One is the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act tells us we have to. And the other reason is it really helps us get in touch with what the needs are in the communities and the people that we serve so that we can plan and organize and be as responsive as we can be. So in the 2013 version of our health assessment, uh, we partnered with the other hospitals in the Pioneer Valley and we conducted a regional survey. And it was really, really clear in the results that people wanted us to address transportation needs. Uh, other needs, just kind of incidentally, just so you're aware of the, of the fullness of this. Uh, mental health and addiction issues were also a priority. Access to care for Latinos. Um, East Hampton, basically, as a community, particularly with tobacco and healthy eating and active living, because we saw high rates of cancer and heart disease. Um, youth substance abuse and just health access is also kind of for general population. Um, so we're working on all of those. We have initiatives, you know, various projects going on. Um, and tonight, obviously, I'm here to talk about um, transportation. So when we got the survey back and we saw these results, we next organized focus groups. And uh, the focus groups were organized around mental health issues, access to care, and East Hampton. Not so much in East Hampton, but for the other two particularly, we really heard a lot of great information about transportation needs, and we heard some ideas. And so we packaged what we heard and then held community forums with even more people so we could test some assumptions and uh, see if we heard it right. And people basically said, you know, where we did or didn't hear it right. So we were pretty confident at that point that uh, we needed to spend some time addressing transportation. We um, hired the United Way of Hampshire County and the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to join us to do a deeper look at transportation issues. The Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, uh, their role was to look at hard data. So bus ridership, minutes of traveling from point A to, to the hospital, um, and the United Way's role was to gather qualitative information. So to do surveys and uh, interviews and things like that. So we could actually hear from people who use uh, public transportation or who are experiencing barriers, what their experiences are. And um, <clears throat> what came out of that is this report, uh, which we have labeled Getting to Healthy, Improving Access to Care. Um, and I have copies. I don't know if everybody or anybody wants a copy. Yeah. Uh, these are also, it's also on our website. If I don't have enough, I apologize. I can it's make sure you get some. Oh, it's on the website. I'll, it is on our website. I'll look for it electronically. If you go to yeah. the cooley-dickinson.org website, about us tab, and then the community health tab, you'll find it right there. There will be a oh, link. Great. And you can, you can get it. Oh, yeah, you got, we got one at home. You're right. I have it in my pocket. So let me give you, um, I have it in my let me give you a, a couple of highlights. Here's the next one. Thank you. You're well, so if you look on page 10, there's a colorful map that just shows um, areas where um, drive times are closer in green or farther in yellow and really far in orange and really, really far in red. So it just kind of shows. Um, you know, how long it takes to get to the hospital. Mm -hmm. The reason we picked the hospital was just as a starting point. We know that to live a healthy life, you need access to transportation for a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. to, to get a job, to go to the market, to visit friends, to you know, be physically active, or whatever it is you, you want to do in life, you need to be able to get there. But the thought of, of working on a project that was so all-encompassing was pretty overwhelming. So for this go-around, we decided to focus on getting to the hospital and also so that um, decision makers at the hospital would see um, you know, the healthcare relationship. Because it's a little harder at this point in time in healthcare to make a case that um, you need access to go to the market. Kind of calls into question, <coughs> what are the boundaries in you know, what a hospital provides and what really is in our business? So I think you know, over the course of time, those boundaries may get a little more blurry. 
Um, but at this point in time, it's, it's clear that when you break your leg or when you, whatever happens to you, you come into the hospital, you know, we're there for that purpose. But we are, you know, because of these health assessments, we are now thinking more broadly about what our role is. So obviously transportation is a key part of that. So I won't get into too much detail on ride times or drive times. But when you look at the next page, flip the page over to page 12, um, this has um, transit service time. Um, and you see uh, some patterns that um, you know are a little bit different. So the red times just show that there's no fixed transit, and the green show that there is a, a fixed transit loop. Um, I'm looking for East Hampton. It's the fourth one. Yeah, so East Hampton, then now move to the right, where it says transit time in the column. Oh, yeah. So that shows us that it's taking 80 minutes to get from East Hampton to Cooley Dickinson. Wow. And if you compare that to drive times, you know, I don't have the number on drive times, but you know it's mm -hmm. just a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. um, if you yeah. were a runner or a jogger, you could probably get there in less time. Mm. So you can imagine somebody with a disability, mm -hmm. um, you know, or or somebody who is um, able-bodied but maybe uh, doesn't have much time because of their job or maybe they're a single parent or what have you. 80, 80 minutes is a barrier. And, um, mm -hmm. Mm. and that's from a community that's pretty close by. Now you would expect from Belchertown or North Amherst, it will take longer, and it mm -hmm. does. What is Chesterfield? <coughs> um, I don't see Chesterfield. Oh, yeah, second one. They don't have one. Oh, they don't have it because there's yeah. no fixed uh, route. Yeah, they're roughly yeah. Mm. So that, 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 it's even more difficult if you live in some of the rural areas. Yeah. There is no way I guess so. I can to, take, to take public transportation. This is an aside from the report, but as, as we put the report out, groups connected to us that I hadn't heard about. So there's a regional coordinating council which is uh, funded from the Executive Office of Health and Human Services. So they have, have funded and organized these various regional coordinating councils around the state. And there is one for the health, health towns that meets in Chesterfield from the uh, CDC. And uh, so we've been meeting and trying to figure out ways we can improve access to transportation. No easy answers on that, but uh, people in rural communities are particularly mm -hmm. disadvantaged. So uh, just some highlights, um, and I'm not, again, Oh, the RCC is already on page 17. So I'm not going to go into great detail on those, but I will tell you some anecdotes that we heard um, starting on page 24, 25. Uh, this is from the work that United Way did. One story I thought was particularly um, compelling and troubling. There's an example of um, a person in um, Sunderland who has a relative with a disability, and uh, this this uh, person really can't easily take public transportation to get to the hospital. And yet he does need to get there on occasion for um, blood draws and things like that. So uh, his mother has to take public transportation to Amherst, borrow a friend's car, drive back to Sunderland to pick up her relative, uh, drive to the hospital, have the test or procedure, drive back to Sunderland, drop her person off, drive back to Amherst, drop the car off, and take the bus back to Sunderland. So this is an, an entire day ordeal. Wow. And having to leave a person with a disability home for periods of time while she's making these transactions. And uh, you can only imagine how exhausting it must be for this mother and the person with disability to have to, you know, have to make this happen. No easy answers on that. Um, but those are the sorts of, of uh, stories that we wouldn't know if we hadn't asked. Mm -hmm. And maybe over time we will find a solution. And maybe over time we'll find a way to um, deploy home care. Mm -hmm. Or in some cases, maybe not this particular case, but maybe in some cases there may be ways to deploy te technology. So for example, somebody with congestive heart failure, mm -hmm. uh, um, we're always very concerned about gaining weight because that could mean that they're retaining fluid. Mm -hmm. So three pounds is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, if they have, in the future, when they have a smartphone or a smart scale, and they weigh themselves, that information will get to their primary care physician or nurse. And an uh, alarm will go off, hey, you know, we better check this out. We'll make a phone call. Maybe the person's really aware of it. They ate a bag of chips at a party. They shouldn't have. They know what they're doing. They're going to be OK. Maybe in some cases, that's not. That's not true, and they're going to be in trouble. 
in the future, we may be able to deploy an ambulance on a pre-911 basis. And they can hang a big bag of Lasix, and um, you know, hopefully everything will be okay, and it will avoid an ambulance trip, and hopefully avoid a hospitalization. So that's in the future, maybe not real far in the future, but at this point, technology and payment systems and systems just have just not, we're not there yet. But that's the sort of thing we're at least thinking about uh, so that in the future maybe we won't have to rely on transportation quite as often as we do now. And that will help in some cases. I think there's also on page 26, and Natasha, Patty and I went to the in-service, the summit that Jeff and several people put on, and this bothers me. If you look on that page 26, mm -hmm. a participant at the ServiceNet listening session has a disability that causes his hands to shake. When boarding the bus, he was unable to feed his dollar bill into the narrow slot to pay his fare. He asked for assistance. However, the bus operator informed him that if he was unable to pay the fare, he would have to get off the bus. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, another rider stepped up to offer him, offer help. He has since been reluctant to use public transportation, mm -hmm. at times missing appointments as a result. So my question, Jeff, on this, is that a policy with the bus transportation that if somebody has a disability and they're asking the driver for help to take his money and to put into the fare feed box, is that the policy? So I'm not in a position to speak for the Pender Valley Transportation Authority, so I, I, I would have to let them answer that, but um, it's something that we brought up at, at this site. Right. And uh, we did have a PVTA representative, and I have talked to someone since. My guess... The rep that was there, you knew who that was too, Patty. My guess is this is a training issue. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there are policy aspects to it, but at, at this stage of fact-finding, we could all agree that's troubling mm -hmm. and needs further, you know, mm -hmm. take, take a further look at it. Absolutely. Now, there are things that are within the hospital's um, purview, to see if we can resolve. This isn't one of them we can resolve directly, but we can use our position as an institution to highlight issues and, and bring voice to issues that people on their own may not, probably won't have, be able to do. It's a similar position that you're in, in human rights, or this commission is in as a commission. When people can't speak for themselves, mm -hmm. and we provide the voice to the structure, or the paper, or the website, or just the opportunity to be asked questions mm -hmm. so that um, people can share their lived experience and hopefully you know, we can see a better outcome. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the intended in, intentions of a report like this, mm -hmm. is that uh, we will solicit information and package it and put it out there more broadly so decision makers like Council of Barge um, and we had several in that room. We had someone from uh, Congressman McGovern's office. Um, yeah. well, I don't want to name everybody, you know, especially being taped, because I'll probably miss a few. But we had political people that were there. Uh, other city councils, uh, Councilor O'Donnell was there. Um, so, you know, again, even though we can't necessarily solve it, we we're, we're highlighting it. And I think this is a public document, you know, it's on our website, which makes it public. Mm -hmm. And anybody who wants to take next steps, if they see something they don't like, should. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage that. Mm -hmm. I want to draw your attention to page 32, just for a minute. And I'll tell you that in this report, we came up with recommendations in four categories. So one is co-location of health care services. Okay. 32. Thank you. One is co-location. So, um, Right now, we're a very automobile-dependent society, and uh, you can go to your doctor's office and you can get a prescription. Well, now you might have to drive to CVS, Walgreens, or Cereals, or whatever, and uh, get your prescription filled. 
you might also need to go to the supermarket and buy soup or you know food or whatever you need um, and you know you you really may not feel up to it and uh, when you don't have a car and you're relying on maybe a friend to drive you now it feels like an imposition you know they were kind enough to take you to your medical appointment but now you've got to ask to get your prescription and these other things and it can get old in a relationship you know to keep asking and so people are reluctant to, to feel that to take advantage of the that feels like they're taking advantage of their friends mm -hmm. and that's when people can sometimes miss appointments or skip medication because they don't want to be a burden mm -hmm. and um and that's just that's not you know it's not effective it's not going to work so we want to think more about in the future how we co-locate services um this is this would really be a policy change and um what our committee can do is bring this to the board bring this to senior people to have it be considered there are other considerations like price of the facility you're trying to rent mm -hmm. um, location for marketing purposes space for future expansion so I, I do know that co-location for um, people with disabilities or people who don't have access is not always going to be the only lens that facilities get looked at but I think it should be a lens and so that was what this report was telling the system at least consider it and see if it can be done co-location could take the a couple of different forms one is could we co-locate with supermarkets or with big box or mm -hmm. you know with wherever people are going or and or can we co-locate with other services that we're already doing so you can get your labs done and you can get to a pharmacy you get all of that medical mm -hmm. stuff you can get mm -hmm. location. Mm -hmm. for our atwood site we are trying to do that mm -hmm. getting there is um a little bit of a barrier with the bus because you've got to take the bus into northampton and then switch the academy of music and then go south mm -hmm. and then heading back north you've got to make the phone call to tell the bus to stop and it will come in make the loop inside and get you um, and if you miss the phone call like if you forget your appointment ran over then you wait the extra hour for the next trip so it's not great it can be done but it, it is a barrier so anyway so at co-location is one area that we looked at mm. bringing care to the patient is another area so already we do that with visiting nurses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they um, <coughs> they have some restrictions in terms of how they get paid we don't have the luxury of an enormous <coughs> endowment where we can just appoint nurses for free. They, we have to bill for it. And there are requirements around that which have to do with being labeled homebound. So you have to have that designation before Medicare will reimburse us for your care. So you know, hopefully in the future we can figure out other creative ways. Uh, VNA will make phone calls, which is um, maybe not the same as full telemedicine where there's a screen. Still make phone calls. So they will call and say, so have you checked your weight? Or have you checked your oxygen level? Or have you done this, that, or the other thing? Do you have food in the house? What temperature is it? Are you warm? Um, who, who can you call to help you make sure that, you know, whatever you need, you're, let's say you're running low on heating oil, those sorts of things. So they can help you think that through. Mm -hmm. So that, that's one step. If you think back to the 50s, doctors did house calls. We don't really do them anymore. No. Maybe that'll make you come back. I don't, wouldn't that be cool? Well, you had a doctor who would be on, wonderful. On staff who did home visits. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, maybe. I mean, it's not unheard of. And there is a doctor in town who does them on bike in Northampton. Mm -hmm. Of course, our coverage area is bigger than Northampton. Yeah. And you're not going to get a bike to Chesterfield. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. At least not easily. So anyway, so that that is something we'll, we will take a look at improving transportation you know again that's not our role but we can collaborate with pbta whatnot and again just making a report like this available helps highlight it i was just going to mention there also is um for people with certain types of disabilities and physical disabilities and like i use it there also is the paratransit van service so maybe and that's not perfect but it is something maybe um finding a way to educate make sure that people know about that and know that that's an option to get to their medical appointments. Yeah, that, that's really uh, perfect um, to do that because we, we know that not every one of our providers knows how to do that. Yeah. And not all the patients know how to do that. So 
that and that's a, an inexpensive should be a fairly simple thing to do mm -hmm. and I think uh, that actually is on our list of recommendations to uh, it's not on this report um, mm -hmm. since this report we now have you know, reconvened after the summit where we heard a lot of additional ideas and that was one of them Tori mm -hmm. and so we have distilled them into five or six recommendations and that was one of them that we presented to the Healthy Communities Committee which is one of our board subcommittees mm -hmm. so I think you'll see us take action on this at some point we already have a newsletter that goes to all the providers it should be fairly simple to put something in there around access and transit mm -hmm. right. now, again there are restrictions it's not for everybody Right. Um, but um, for people who don't know about it, now they can. There's right. also PT1, you know, for yeah. people who have mass health. Mm -hmm. That can also be something else that some people may not even know that that's an option for them. They may not, and my guess is some providers have those forms in their offices and some don't. Mm -hmm. Because my understanding is you have a form and you have to fax it in to mass health and then they approve. Right. And that can take time. I don't think it's a crazy amount of time, but it can take time to say it's a 24 hour turnaround. Right, but if you are in a, having a, a doctor's appointment and then you have a follow up and you know that you're going to need transportation, you yeah. can do that, you know, in a timely way. Yeah, that would exactly. Be to so it's just, it's one more tool mm -hmm. that will help. And then the last category um, is just using technology. So I started to talk about telehealth and phones. We do think there will be a time in the future, just like the Jetsons, you know, where you will. <laughs> you remember the Jetsons, right? I remember oh, yeah. that. Yes. Right? No, <laughs> I was born in 1980. Whoa. <laughs> so you don't remember, you don't remember the Jetsons? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, when I went to that summit. Go to YouTube and look them up. <laughs> it was like, in our group was one of the guys from PBTA, mm -hmm. and he was talking and talking and talking, and I said, by the way, the Commission on Disabilities is one who invited you because of all the problems that have arisen, and our commission is the one who presented what the big problems were, mm -hmm. many meetings. And oh, he yes. said, you're correct. He said, without the Commission on Disabilities, he said a lot of that was settled. Mm -hmm. I've been known to have a lot to say about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just for your knowledge, I use it. with um, PDTA, we actually provide space for them to do ADA applications here mm -hmm. so people don't have to go to Springfield. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so a lot of people do come here and um, we also have a lot of ridership meetings here so that um, riders can come in and share their concerns and issues about their transportation through PVTA. Mm -hmm. um, and is it is it available in Spanish too? And other languages um, spoken in, in if it, if in somebody asks for that through PVTA, then yes. Um, the last time they were here, um, someone came to do sign language, but mm -hmm. the person who requested it was not here. Okay. Um, but they will make accommodations. So then the agencies need to know that they can ask the PVTA for that. And right, PBTA and then that's that's mm -hmm. what they should send be doing. somebody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's important. Very. Right. And it was one of those terrible things that you don't know what you don't know mm -hmm. so exactly. you don't know to ask yeah. for it so how do we get over that hurdle um, are you exactly, talking about for the ridership uh, meetings or for for everything, everything that we're talking about today for everything that we're yeah. talking about if something should be added that says um, interpretation provided upon request or something to let people know that they have that option and or available call. in your language mm -hmm. that's what I think mm -hmm. Well, I think um, all of us who are advocates, whether it's for people with disabilities or people of color or, or, or of anything, uh, we all have responsibility to, mm -hmm. to talk, to show up, to do reports, to, um, to illuminate the issues that are going on and, and make sure that decision makers know about them and mm -hmm. that people hear you know, what we're demanding or requesting or whatever mm -hmm. I, I'll give you one uh, small example um, right now telehealth is not reimbursed and we are doing some telemedicine at hospital to hospital for uh, people who have strokes burns neurology we can uh, and have been for a while doing uh, uh, video conferencing or, or tele mm -hmm. teleconferencing with Mass General mm -hmm. so if you have a stroke they can actually see what we can see through CAT scans and they can uh, give our doctors recommendations. 
But now extrapolate that idea now to your home and maybe you're at home and you're talking to your doctor. Well, your doctor's not gonna be reimbursed for that um, procedure or that visit. Um, so even though it would be more convenient for you to be home, obviously your doctor can't just give away services. Mm -hmm. So um, there is a bill that's working its way through the state house that would provide a way eventually to get reimbursed. Um, I think there's some language in Medicare and Medicaid, so there's some federal stuff too. But, but if, if there was a way to get reimbursed, I think you would see patients, some patients would embrace it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm making a guess that younger patients would particularly embrace it, but you know, I think older people would too. I mean, I think of my mother who is in her late 70s, mid to late 70s. She would kill me for saying this on TV. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a young 76. Um, but I, you know, I think there are people who are older who really would embrace it. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, um, it would just be again one more tool, mm -hmm. and I think it's coming. But it's not easy for society to change its paradigm. Mm -hmm. So you know, as just a thought to put out there around advocacy, mm -hmm. you know, be aware that there, that's a bill. Mm -hmm. uh, you all have state reps, and uh, maybe if they know you're advocating for it, it would just make it happen that much more quickly. Mm -hmm. I have talked to them. Uh, Representative Cybach is the one who has sponsored the bill, so and he's in our area, so hopefully that will be influential. What, what does he represent? Uh, East Hampton, South Hadley, okay. and um, Hadley. Go for Hadley. Ours is Peter Kokot. And Peter yeah. Kokot. Yeah. Um, so we, we're really fortunate to have a really great um, legislative group who've been mm -hmm. in positions for a long story. time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, obviously, their five votes don't. Carry the day, you know. Mm -hmm. Boston's do so. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a, you almost don't have to call them because they're so good. You just want to say, call, "You're doing great. Keep doing what you're doing." I don't. Yeah. But yeah, but you're right. If they but but they still it's still valuable for them to hear every now and oh, then on specific things. And um, and so I think that's pretty much what I want to tell you is just some of what's in here to point you to it as a resource to let you know we are making some specific recommendations. We don't have a lot of money. Uh, to throw at this, you know, Why not? I wish we did, but you know, we're going to be able to do some things that are inexpensive, and uh, we do have a very small budget to try some pilot projects. So, mm -hmm. it's a step. Uh, Tori, I have my hand up. Oh yes. Um, well, thank you for this. I look forward to reading it. Just looking it over at the pages that you were telling us to look at. If they, there's, I know there's really great information. There's something, there's, there's a page here that has a subway system and I don't understand it. And no, it's actually not a subway system. system. That's page... Um, That's page 13. 13. Yeah. This is the Pioneer Valley Transit Service Map. And um, this shows the bus routes. And okay. My eyes are not good enough to uh, tell you what the letters say. Oh, okay. Say. I was, I was gonna... All right, then it's fine. It does look like a subway, but it's... Oh, That's so nice. Amherst... All I had to do was look at the headline, and I would have If you look at the upper right, you see Amherst. Yeah. And so those are the buses that you can see, like, the green one goes out and back. That shows how it goes to Holiday Mall. But anyway, I mean, shop and shop. This is really has rich information, I'm sure. And I wanted to add um, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission um, has hired a few people, including myself to work with people in um, emerging leaders in Springfield wow. to um, pressure our federal delegation to put more money into transit, into mm -hmm. sidewalks and public transportation, Excellent. and not so much Excellent. into making more roads. Of course, we have to make our roads safe, and of course, we have to fix the bridges and all that. Right. But, you know, a, Basically, it has been very uneven, the amount of money, federal money, that has gone into transit. I think more than 80% goes to make more roads, so people need cars, and then the remaining balance of less than 20% to for good sidewalks, for good public transportation. Mm -hmm. And 20% is not very much. And it's no. not, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if that's something that we can also, is that something that, so the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission applied for that grant in the name of Springfield. Um, I don't know if there's something that Northampton itself can do to get funding well, to I, do that. I, I think one connection, and, and this, Catherine Rattay, or whoever you're yeah, working Catherine. with, would, would know yeah. more. But there is a regional coordinated council that meets actually at Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. 
And I think Northampton would be in that area rather than the one in Chesterfield. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to go to both because our, our service area overlaps everything. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that would be maybe a good place for Northampton to have representation. I'll mention it to her when I see her next She'll know, She knows more about it than I do. But yeah, yeah. But it's, it's vitally important. And even with road get, you know, roads getting uh, so much of the attention, mm -hmm. there are still design elements within roads that would make them safer. Mm -hmm. and easier for people with disabilities to cross, or if you're in a wheelchair, or you know, even if you're not, but you have a bike or you're pushing a stroller, mm -hmm. you know, through um, a raised, um, what do they call them, crosswalks, and um, there's other various design elements, like you see where they have the roads come in. I've seen okay. And to have the crosswalk that way, mm -hmm. that's a design element to slow traffic down. Because mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you know, you, if you just have parking all the way through, cars can go right. so fast, and you don't have a chance to cross it. We've got to go out to the government, because every town, every city has allocated so much money. We are very fortunate this year that we got an extra, what was it, $500,000 in the kitty, and our Chapter 90 funds, okay, doesn't even cover what has to be done. If what are Chapter 90 funds? For roads. For roads. Every town, every city gets that from okay. the government. Mm -hmm. And this year, we were given more money, mm -hmm. the towns and the cities. So, and no matter what streets on the list, Park Hill Road on our ward, mm -hmm. okay, people are livid because there's another street in Northampton that is being totally done over at 90 something thousand dollars, and it's just a side street, you know? So, what can I say? The government is only going to give you so much, and I agree about pressuring them, because it's not helping. Our main roads need to be good and safe in order to travel on. Okay. Well, in terms of design, I to make one more um, plug, and that is uh, Northampton is really, really fortunate to have Wayne Fighting yeah. as your um, planning and sustainability best. director. And uh, he's a real ally when it comes to things like complete streets and getting people walking and moving and um, I think, you know, making sure he's incorporated into advocacy or at least aware of what you want. Find you'd, you'd find him really useful. He's gone um, away. He's gone away for a whole, what, what is okay. it? He's away for a month. Yeah. So the, the, what we have here on page like the 32 and 33, these are recommendations. Mm -hmm. uh, what is like a next step from this report? Yeah, so what, what happened was uh, we, we uh, had this report now developed, and we released it publicly um, at a summit on, in February, and we had 50 or so people there. At the summit, we um, presented, and then we also asked people to work in, in small group tables to um, take these recommendations and brainstorm additional, like really just enrich it. And then we, um, the Healthy Communities Committee of the hospital took all of those and tried to summarize and narrow and pick what we felt was realistic for us at this point in time. And so we made those recommendations to the Full Healthy Communities Committee, which is one of the board set committees at our April meeting. So that's kind of where things are right now. Mm. Okay, I'm just gonna make a comment on page 32, mm -hmm. type of improvement. Um, it says improve transportation, then E, train PVTA drivers to better understand the needs of differently yep. able riders. Tori and I actually both were in a video that PVTA mm -hmm. um, sponsored, and it was a training tool for all the drivers. It, the the um, interviews were with different um, professionals who work with persons with disabilities as well as persons with disabilities so people who use the service yeah, um, so and I and I want to say that one of the things that I think I know we both stressed was that all disabilities aren't visible um, right so exactly that's exactly what it says and um, and not to make assumptions yeah right yeah so so now you know it's on PBT now to, to figure out how they want to assess and train mm -hmm. but you know again this report the role of this report was to highlight that yeah. Mm -hmm. And bring it to attention. And that was very good. Um, you know, this, I, I think it's fair to say that whether it's transportation or any other community issues that affect health, we're, we can get used to these sorts of conversations. 
we want to be partners, we want to be engaged, um, and we want to hear from people what the issues are. We're not going to solve everything right away, but um, you know, we're going to solve a few of them, mm -hmm. and we're going to generate conversation mm -hmm. and um, some awareness that wasn't there before. So I think you know, we should occasionally revisit this, and if anything has come to mind from your commission that you think we should know, you know, you can let me know, and we will just keep feeding that into the Healthy Communities Committee. Thank you. I'm just going to say that uh, having attended the summit, it was, um, well, one, very interesting, but it was great to hear what a lot of the um, people sitting at the tables were saying. Mm -hmm. It was just, um, I guess, when it's like, how do you know what everybody's talking about, or, you know, how do you get that information that it was um, just a good experience um, with all the information that was put together. And afterwards, being able to talk to a number of people who somebody had talked about, you know, bringing nutrition to people, meaning, you know, having farmer markets closer to, like, some place like here. Um, and you had, you were there too when we were trying to talk to somebody yeah. afterwards. So it's great when you can network with other people mm -hmm. where you don't always get that opportunity with mm -hmm. so many people in the same room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. one of, that was a very good one. One of the things that uh, we have spoken about in, on the Human Rights Commission is to create something like a, we don't have a title, but something like the big book of health, that uh -huh. in alphabetical order. So for instance, under age for health, this sort of information would be there. And then if they, that P1 thing you were all talking about, P2 for general, one. CT1, yep. and transportation, just a place where that it's very, you know, you, you just think of keywords and maybe there's yeah. cross-referencing in case you don't think of the, the, you know, the right word. Mm -hmm. Community mm -hmm. action. We, think we found yeah. out that community yeah. action. Oh, we thought yeah. oh, because we thought they had something Community like that. action used to do a booklet. It was called the Red Book. Yeah. And um, I believe it was in 2008 that they stopped putting that together. But it had everything. If you needed a resource, you went and looked right. in that book. Exactly. Um, we need that. And there Isn't was the first book. book. Yes. Yes. The yes. first right. book. Right. 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 No, I can tell. And there is two on one. That is not. I don't two think what they asked. Yeah. I have no idea what's two on one. Um, so two on one is for social services information. Mm. See, so you know, like four one one is for information. Right. So two on one is for. Like, if you need a resource, like if you need to find out about transportation or housing. Oh my goodness, so it's like the book, but except it's by phone. Well, right? it, it may not be completely what you're talking about, but check that out. It's pretty It may okay. um, make over some of what you're looking for. Because, Tori, wow. you asked for something through Claire Higgins, right, the that executive was, director. What was that? That was what First we just said for um, um, Community Action. Well, she is we meeting, had asked about a book. She is meeting with our commission on Wednesday, and she's bringing it to me. Oh. She's bringing what to you, the, the book or the 211? The information that our committee had asked for. So what she will bring about? that along. I'm lost. We, okay, so we had, we had asked about um, a resource book. And I'm a little confused too because I thought Patty said yeah, they're, 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 they're not, they're not oh, doing that First call anymore. for help. First call for yeah. help. That's yeah. what you asked for. Right. It's community action flyer. Right. So there's going to so, be a new one now? It was last put out in 2008, but there's going to be one now. When we called there, 2008 was the last time that book was put out. Well, let's see what she brings. Let's see what Yeah, that would be great. great. Let's see what she brings. Maybe there is something more up to date. Maybe whoever answered the phone didn't. Is this next one saying? No, what is this one? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Right. We have a meeting. Social service veterans. Okay. So I'll be very okay. interested. Oh, that's human rights also. So I will, she's, Mary Claire's bringing it to me tomorrow, George. Excellent. So I'll bring it here. And keep in mind, a lot of us who aren't going to be there are very tomorrow. interested. Yeah. That yeah. Is very, exactly. very helpful. What time is it? Five. And where is it? Four o'clock, I mean. Four. And where is it? We're at Council Chambers. Council Chambers. Yeah. Okay. And um, I hope I can get that. If, if you can't, we'll make right. sure we share the information. Thank with you. you. You want to come just to listen because you're not on the agenda. To so. listen. Yeah. We start at 5. Okay. No, 4 o'clock. Oh, Christ, I got so many meetings going on. <laughs> <laughs> 4 to 6. Who's on first? Okay. Okay. Got it. Because I got a heavy schedule tomorrow. Oh, no, I'm just there to listen. Toya, I have my hand up. Oh. Can I say one more thing? Yes. 
course. So just as we did the health assessment to get this far, mm -hmm. uh, we have to conduct them every three years. And so we're, we're in the early stages of starting to think about what that should look like. And so um, it'd be great at some point to ask you or, or hear from you what would be useful information for you. Now keep in mind we have many communities and many topics, mm -hmm. but um, it would still be really helpful because if we're designing a focus group, mm -hmm. we could incorporate a question or two or if we're designing a survey, mm -hmm. as you know, we talked to you at one point, mm -hmm. um, it would be just better if you're feeding us what you want instead of us making some assumptions or okay. making it up without that information. That so feel good. free to send an email or a call or whatever if you have a specific mm -hmm. or, or even not so specific things you want us to know. We will. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Was there anything else you wanted to no. share with us? And I talked with um, Pat Keller. So I need to book you for September for social services and veterans affairs, cultural recreation. Okay. Any okay. other questions for Jeff right okay. now? Which you should write the state name, <coughs> and I'd like you to do the summit. Peg, Peg and I talked. The three about, Yeah, oh. we thought that would be excellent. Okay. okay. Thank you. Very Thank much. you so much for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. September 21st. What's that? And it might be changed because I think it's our primary, isn't it? The 22nd? I don't have my calendar, but you're probably. But for now, it's 21st at 5. Yeah. It okay. doesn't make any difference. Okay. I know. We can make it for anyone. All right. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. All right. So, do we have any um, other business or announcements? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Ruth. Ruth? Yeah, just real quick, we talked before the uh, meeting. Health and oh, Safety yeah. Fair here is May 7th. We yeah. need to know where the banner is so we can put it on the table. I'm available to sit at the table from 10 until 1.30. I don't know if anybody else is available to take that last half hour, but I have to go pick up my husband, so I have to leave then. Um, is anyone, I've got, um, is right? anyone available to do that? I'm not, unfortunately. Um, I might be. Hannah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Hannah, you want to do that from 1.30 to 2? Sure. Sure. Great. Great. You can come early. You can visit. <laughs> sure. That would be great. I've um, got a variety of handouts to put on the table. I've made some copies of more recent minutes. Um, I've got things like the 911 form that's on the poll out there to get your name into dispatch. Oh, that's um, great. The front of the web page, you know, just different things to, to, so we'll have things on the table. I also have a bowl of uh, Hershey's Kisses because everybody says that they like to come to the people tables when they get to That'll shopping. make people come. <laughs> oh, Ruth, thank you for taking, doing that and for both of you, you and Hannah, for, for taking that on. That'll be great. And the banners here, Ruth. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have any other announcements or anything else that anyone wants to? No. We have, are we ready to make a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All not in favor?